We're glad you've tuned in to the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak, sitting with Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. They are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. On the show each and every week, we dive into the biggest topics facing you as a retiree, or maybe you are a soon-to-be retiree. There's a lot on your plate as you try to think about everything that you need to get in order to have that successful retirement. It's what it's all about. And we are going to be telling you throughout the program today how you can get registered for Kirk and Paul's upcoming courses. These are taught at local universities, easy to register, and I want you to keep the phone number handy, 800-240-8981, and the website, retirementplanningedu. Org. Kirk, Paul, it's great to be back with you. I'm really excited about this topic because you say there are some mistakes that we're making in retirement that we can correct. And that's the part I want to learn about. Tell us more about this. Well, I, I think what we're going to do is we're going to try to tackle the six biggest mistakes. I know I, I, people are pre- probably pretty tired of hearing all these six mistakes, four this, five this. So look, there are so many mistakes people make heading into retirement and a lot of it centered around thinking the same sort of strategy they've used to accumulate their wealth while they were serving money, their whole life serving money is going to be the same behaviors you're going to need to distribute your wealth or allow money to serve you. And so we want to help you better understand. But before we start, Paul, I think it's really important that we have this caveat. Today's episode we are going to be talking to the people that are not the average baby boomer, right? And some people might be surprised by that, right, Paul? When I say we're going to talk to all those people who are not the average retiree. <laughs> so I'm assuming most people think they're the average retiree, and a lot of you are not. Let, let, let us define, financially speaking, what the average retiree will retire with. The average baby boomer will retire with savings of $200,000 for retirement. That's it. That's what they have. They have saved $200,000 for retirement. In fact, almost 40% of retirees will get most all of their income only from Social Security. So all of you, those of you who think you are average and you have a million, two, three, listen, if you got $2 million saved for retirement, you are 10 times more wealthy than the average baby boomer. So it's helpful for people to recognize sort of what category they're in. And today what we're talking to is the people who have saved money and have resources for retirement. And those people, there are six mistakes. The six mistakes Well, let's just jump in with the first one, Paul. I think the first one is working longer than you need, right? (laughs) It is remarkable. See, Paul and I's fear isn't you outliving your money. I may be, we are concerned about those average retirees outliving their money, but the people who have saved resources for retirement, our fear for you isn't outliving your money. Our fear is you way underspending what you otherwise could be spending because of fear and anxiety or working way too long or longer than you need to. And we'll get into why that's such a big mistake is working longer than you need to and how it can harm you financially working longer. But Paul, how often are we seeing this? See it all the time. I just had a meeting, met a person for recently, I think $3 million dollars in the mid sixties, yeah. in the mid sixties, wanting maybe, you know, a hundred thousand dollars to live on and, and totally afraid they're going to outlive their money and they're pinching pennies, pinching well, pennies. Well, it's funny. I, I was pinching That's penny. not funny. It's not funny. Well, it is funny because it is. Here's why. Because first of all, pinching pennies are, is relative, right? right, <laughs> right? right, right. They're not pinching pennies, but funny, ironic thing is when you start to show people that have two, three, four million dollars saved for retirement. Well, let, let, let's come back to that. I'm going to come back to that topic, okay? Because it's really important people have an idea. These courses that we're teaching, helping people to plan for retirement, these courses are seven to eight hours long, and they're taught at all the major universities, Michigan, Eastern Michigan, Michigan State, Oakland University. We're also streaming them live because of COVID. We're now streaming them so you can stay in your own home. To attend these courses, to avoid these mistakes, all you have to do is pay, make a $29 donation to charity, and then you can go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Kirk, if I can do this, I, I, I shouldn't have said pinching pennies. I, I agree with you. There are a lot of people listening and thinking, 
If we gave them the numbers, they would be probably upset by the comment. But let me just say this. You know this couple. This is a, we met these people. I think actually they were $4 million, and they were afraid to spend money. And once we sat down and showed them what they really can do, I remember the wife turning to the husband, looking at him and saying, why did you work so long? Like, I, we, there are so many things I've wanted to do over the last five years that we've not done because I've been afraid that I'm not going to, that we're going to run out of money. And in fact, at the end, they're going to leave millions of dollars and they don't have children, by the way, millions of dollars to charity that, you know, they, they want to leave some money, but not millions. If they hadn't met us, I'm yeah. just going to say, if they hadn't met us, they would have continued this life. If they hadn't gone to our class. That's right. That's right. That's if right. They hadn't gone to the that's class. Right, that's and right. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. It's really interesting when we start to show people the amount of forced distributions, forced income they have to take in their mid-70s and 80s between their requirement of distributions, their Social Security. I think they – in fact, I know they had a pensions. The pension. They had pensions. Yeah. They, their, their forced income in their mid-70s was going to be like $220,000. Yes. And they were living on less than $100,000. And he, he had just recently retired. He could have retired three, four years prior to that and still lived on $150,000 to $180,000 a year and never outlived their money. Right. right. They, people don't know what their money can do. And fear drives and, – and fear manifests itself, Paul, as you know, as a recovering psychologist, as you like to say. In so many different financial behaviors, I need to work for health care, right? I need to hit the $2 million because that was my target. Well, why? I don't know. It's just my target. Like, I almost feel like people are waiting for a sign from above to say, my child, you now have enough to retire. Like, or something magical to happen saying, you now have enough. And it's, it doesn't work that way. That's why these courses are so critical to give you an understanding. We're talking about the most sophisticated, educated people in our communities. CFOs for Fortune 500 companies. CPAs. I know you guys are very smart people. I'm telling you, you have no clue what your money can produce for you in retirement. Because you don't know half the levers to pull. And what? Look, spend seven hours to educate yourself so you know what you need to do to get the best outcomes in retirement. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. You can go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Or call 800-240-8981. Back with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. Always a pleasure to be alongside financial instructors Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. They're with the Retirement Education Foundation. And if you haven't signed up for the foundation's courses and Remember, these are deep dives into retirement planning, so necessary for a modern retirement where we have a lot of moving parts. Kirk and Paul really take the long road to try to help you understand everything you need for a successful retirement. Get registered today. And these are taught at local universities, University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, also Oakland University. Your choice, either a one-day or two-day course or you can enjoy the course from the comfort of your own home. Register now. Go to retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. Kirk and Paul, we've been talking about the six biggest retirement mistakes that people tend to make, and I've been jotting these down. We started with a big one that's kind of a head-scratcher, though, and it says that this mistake is working longer than you need to. I'm surprised by this one. Does this catch your clients off guard? Well, it catches uh, uh, the attendees at the class. I, you know, we teach, we've taught thousands of people. We've been teaching these classes for over 10 years at most all the major universities. And when we always start the class with this, right? I mean, y y the problem is the public has been conditioned to believe these general rules that really apply to the average retiree. And the disconnect is people think they're the average retiree, and most people who are attending our courses are not. And, and quite frankly, a lot of the people who are listening to this show, we know the demographics. They're not the average retiree, right? They, they have more than $200,000 saved for retirement. So this has been a, an issue for a long time. People not really recognizing and understanding what their money could do with a customized 
individualized plan that they have created for themselves as opposed to the 4% rule of the general rules, right? And when you start to understand as a mid-60-year-old that if you really have the right levers to pull in retirement, you can take 6 7 8% a year out of your investments without outliving your money if you just know what when. Then what we figure out, and many people often figure out, is they're working way longer than they need to. And unfortunately for some, this working longer, maybe, Paul, you can address this. Besides the obvious health and lifestyle challenges with working longer, there are, a f- there are financial challenges with working longer, Paul. Of course there are. A- and, and Well, you say of course, but I don't think people, they, they think that's like, that's an oxymoron. How does working longer hurt me financially? We'll explain. Well, there are, there are many there are many risks of working longer, right? I mean, you 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 mentioned two non financial, but at the end of the day, the longer you, I mean, unless you want to leave a lot of money to charity or to your children, right? The longer you work, the more money you save, and most people they're saving money in their retirement plans, their four hundred one ks or four hundred three bs. And as you mentioned a few minutes ago, the, the person that we met from the class, at the end of the day, when you're 72 years old, you're going to be forced to take a certain amount of money out. The longer you work, the more you're taking out. All that money's never been taxed, right? All of those monies that you've saved in your 401ks and your 403bs, at 72 years old, you're going to be forced to take that money, right? And when they start taking that money, all of that's taxable, right? So you work longer. Now you're paying more tax to the government, right? Now your Social Security is taxable where it didn't have to be taxable, at or the, as taxable. Or as taxable. At the end of the day, you're working longer, not for you. You're working longer for the government or for maybe charity or maybe for your children, but you're not doing it for yourself. Well, okay. So Paul said a, a, a several things there. I want to break a couple of those things down. One is most of you, many of you who continue to work beyond what you need to work and you don't know it are just working to leave more money to the kids, right? Or or your loved ones. Here's the Here's a big problem. You are sh- reducing the runway between your retirement date and 72. Those years leading up to 72 are the years that you have the greatest opportunity to do real planning. What do I mean planning? It's repositioning assets, whether it's Roth conversions, uh, if you're at all philanthropic giving to charity at all, being more tactical in your charitable giving so that you can minimize future tax liabilities I know this is probably foreign to you, some of these things we're saying. This is what we're saying. There's so many levers to pull, and that longer the runway between retirement and 72, the more we can fix for tax liabilities for the rest of your life. Now, you're going to ask, so I pay more taxes. Well, here's the deal. The more I have to pull out of my investments to live on, to net the amount I need to live on, that means the shorter your money will last, right? Think about it. If someone said to you, you need $150,000 a year net to live on, and you're going to need to take out $190,000 a year, pay taxes and net $150,000, or you retiring early allows us to only have you pull out $160,000 for you to net the $150,000. That's a $30,000 a year difference from 72 on the rest of your life. Well, that, that That's more money in your pockets or it's more money going to your kids, right? So that's one issue. Here's, a, here's another one, Paul. Hold on. Here's another one. We are at an all-time high in the markets. Your lump sum pensions are as high as they'll ever be, and they're about to go down, by the way. So you continue to work thinking you're in control of when you get to retire, which you aren't. You're one recession away from being laid off, and you're, that recession will also take your investable assets and make them significantly less. So it's kind of like this. You've ran the marathon, and you've won that marathon already. But for some reason, you're going to keep running the marathon, go back another 10 miles, and rerun the marathon so that you can pull a hamstring, tear an ACL, injure yourself so you can't even finish the race, right? So working longer sets up so many greater risks that if you have enough, you should retire. The problem is people don't know what their money can do, Paul. Right, right. They don't. And, and you know, you skipped, you sort of said quickly a few minutes ago, you, you know, yeah, if you, if you work longer, put aside your health or quality of life. And, and yes, working longer has financial implications. But we also know many people that we've met who work longer that didn't need to, and then at some point retire, and their health isn't good, or they pass away, or something happens, 
And all of a sudden, they've spent 65 years in working, and then they retire and never, ever get to enjoy that. That is important. That is a big deal, right? You don't work your whole life so that you can retire and never enjoy it. What was the purpose then, right? People always think they can retire, and then they're going to have 20 more years to enjoy their life. It's not a given, right? It's not a given, which is why you need to learn this stuff in the class. You got to register for our, our eight-hour course, one full day or two evening courses at all the major universities. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. And we'll be back. There's much more with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. Glad to be here with Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler, financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. This, of course, is the Retirement Education Hour. We come to you each week talking about all things retirement and arming you with what you need to know to retire successfully in the 21st century. Big topic today is we're identifying some of the biggest retirement mistakes that people make. And we are going to get right back into that. I want to make sure that you know how to get registered for the Retirement Education Foundation's upcoming retirement courses. And these are taught at local universities, including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, Oakland University. If you'd like to attend virtually from your home, you can do that as well. Here's how to register. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. Or you can call 800-240-8981. Let's talk about our relationship with money because you say, Kirk and Paul, this is one of those top mistakes we make as we get closer to retirement. What happens? Well, we spend our lives serving money, right? And what do I mean by serving money? Well, we are saving. We're trying to save and grow as much as we can so that we can help raise our children, put our kids through school and have enough for retirement to enjoy our retirement, right? So we're serving, we're growing, we're doing things ourselves at our homes, we're cutting and trying to save as much expenses as possible so we can put as much away as possible. And this is a 30 to 40 year habit where you have conditioned yourself to this behavior. This is very, very difficult. And I would say men, and I tend to pick on men a little bit, in our shows, you'll, you, you'll, you'll hear this, is that I think ego tends to get in the way and the emotions and fear and anxiety that they're going to feel in retirement, they're afraid to admit that they're going to have that fear and that relationship with money. So we have to learn to transition from serving money to allowing money to serve you. What do I mean? I mean, it's not about continuing to grow your wealth. You spent 30 to 40 years to do that. Now, I'm not suggesting you don't need growth. Obviously, we need investments and growth, but that isn't the priority. The priority needs to be on how do I maximize my distributions to be able to give me the freedom and peace of mind so I don't have fear and anxiety. How do I do that? Well, I I, I need to I got to pivot the way I think about the money and my investments to recognize it's there to serve me now. And I'm not going to allow short-term market events or who's being elected or any of those things to get in the way. In other words, don't, if, if it's a $10,000 home improvement that you're going to, that you would have done in, in the past yourself and you're now in your sixties and you've got two, $3 million saved, trust me that $10,000 home improvement project, you can pay somebody to do it. And it's not going to impact your cash flow on an annual basis at all. You have to be able to quantify what those dollars mean on an annual basis throughout retirement. And it'd be nothing. So, so Kirk, you know, when you, th- when you think about some of the people that we meet in our classes and you hear their stories and you hear, you know, what, what ruined the retirement, what blew up the retirement, it's never, it's never because they only earned Six percent, not seven percent. Right. When you think about honestly, you think about the people we meet in our classes and they tell us there's some of some of them tell us their stories of how their retirement was blown up. It's not because they didn't get enough growth. It's because they did not know how to take income in the right in the right way. Right. And what they end up doing is they took income from the wrong accounts at the wrong time. And that's what blew up the plan. And, and I think this is hard for people who are who haven't retired to understand this. But at the end of the day, what's going to determine whether you succeed 
or, or fail. It's not going to be whether you earn 5% or 6% or 4% in retirement. It's irrelevant. It's People irrelevant. It's that. irrelevant. It is all about how you distribute your wealth over your retirement. That's what's going to make it. Right? How and when. How From and which when. accounts. And, 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 and that's right. That, the, the problem is that's not very sexy, right? That, that, that doesn't make us feel – I mean, that's not fun. That's not, you know, growing money's fun, right? Hitting a home run is fun. Figuring out how to take income – that's not really fun. And I think a lot of people are sort of addicted to this growth mentality, but that's not what's going to determine success. Yeah, no, exactly, Paul. I mean, the people coming to our classes are not the average retiree. These people have over a million dollars of investable assets, typically. They have at least four years post-high school education. These are edu- these are CFOs, CEOs, engineers, do-it-yourselfers. These are sophisticated, often sophisticated investors. Sometimes, not always, but sometimes they're not. But most of these people have a pretty good understanding of their investments, right? Investments is not what's going to drive success in retirement. I know you guys don't believe us. I, I could, sh- We're going to show you in the class, if you attend, how you can have an average 10% rate of return over 20 years in retirement and take out 5% a year to live on and run out of money in 17 years. It's where and when... There are so many more levers that you don't know about because you're still focused on serving money and growing your money. Your relationship with money has to change. I'll give another analogy, Paul. They all have furniture for a home they haven't built yet. You guys have investments. You have strategies. You have different tools that you currently have that is not going to work in your retirement but worked incredibly well to grow your wealth. But it's it's going to have to change to most effectively give you the retirement you want. Right. And, and again, I, I think... I think this is probably the single most challenging uh, transition transition for, for most people. And, and I would say out of all the, the mistakes that people make, probably the, the, the most harmful mistake. Because if you don't do this, if you don't do this, not only are you going to make potentially some big mistakes, but you're going to live your retirement in fear. If your relationship That's with money it. doesn't change. You're going to live retirement in fear and in anxi- and anxiety. And that is not what anybody signed up for when they decided to work so many years, right? That's not, you know, that's not the panacea of retirement. Paul, men don't believe this and won't admit it because they were disciplined in 2008, right? Because right. someone else was paying you a paycheck every single week so that you could pay your bills. Now, when someone stops paying you a paycheck, and all you have is your wealth to pay yourself a paycheck, and we have an event. How are you going to behave if you don't stop serving money and understand how to design and implement your own custom retirement plan? You're not going to have the freedom and let that money serve you. So this is why we teach our eight-hour courses. We spend eight hours teaching you how to construct what takes us 50 hours to construct a retirement plan in all the levers and when to pull the levers that are available to you that you don't even know about yet. You need to register for one of these classes that are taught at all the major universities and we are now streaming it live from the university so you can stay in your home if you're more comfortable. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. You can register at Retirement Planning edu.org that's retirement planning edu.org or call 800-240-8981 and we'll be back more with kirk and paul straight ahead this is the retirement education hour we're glad you're with us on the show today megan mozak here with financial instructors kirk cassidy and dr paul mettler from the retirement education foundation And the foundation sponsors courses, courses right here in our community that are so incredibly valuable. If you are newly retired, maybe you're right on the brink of retirement, you owe it to yourself to get registered, attend these courses so you can retire confidently, have that dream retirement, that successful retirement you've worked so hard for. Here's how you do it. You can call or you can go online, 800-240-8981. Or retirementplanningedu.org. Keep in mind, it's either a one or two day course, or you can also take it virtually. Options for everyone. So get registered today. We've been talking about the top retirement mistakes that people make. And Kirk and Paul, you say a common mistake people make is trying to protect their principal, which, you know, seems like something that would be pretty obvious. You know, when you get close to retirement, you want to protect what you've saved, you want to protect your nest egg. Well, that's certainly what our industry is 
conditioned you to believe, right? I mean, I, I think that's really, really good advice. Protecting your principal if you're an average retiree who only has saved or only or has $200,000 saved for retirement. I think that's a really good principle to live by, protecting that principle. But those people who have resources, I would pose the question this way. If you had $2 million the day you retired, is it your goal, your priority to make sure that $2 million is left when you die to go to your heirs? Now, I, to be fair, I, I, we have plenty of people that come to our courses. We have plenty of people in our private practice who legacy is truly a major priority. We also meet a lot of people early in our classes who come in and say, yes, legacy is important to me, but it's not as important as they think. The legacy being a priority was a behavior about fear and anxiety. It was an excuse that they were using to make sure they didn't have to confront the fear of outliving their money. I want a big legacy for my kids so I don't spend down my money. It's often an argument used in a marriage for one spouse versus the other because one is spending, wanting to spend a little more than the other, and they'll use the excuse, but I really want a lot legacy for my children, but it's really, I'm fearful outliving my money, so we're constantly fighting about what we're spending. How about this? What if I said this? You retire with $2 million, $3 million, whatever it is, a $1 million. How about a controlled spend down of your money just as long as you don't ever outlive your money? A controlled spend down with guarantees that you can never outlive your money. That's probably more in line with the majority of people who are retiring with resources. But Paul, they're not going to get that, right? Because our industry is not incentivized. Two things. Our industry makes more money the more money they have and you have invested with them, right? They charge by often by a percentage of whatever they have under management. So if you're spending down the money, that means their income is being reduced every year as you take money out of those accounts. So there's an incentive for, for them to tell you to protect your principal so they have more money under management. The second issue is if you protect your principal, they really don't have to plan, Paul. What plan do they have to create? You're going to self-regulate. In other words, when we have a bad economy, a recession, you're not going to spend because you're going to protect your principal. They don't have to pivot. They don't have to figure out what accounts to go to. They don't have to come up with strategies to navigate the volatility. They don't have to do anything. You're going to do it all for them. It makes their job super easy. It does. That's a, actually an excellent point. I mean, I think that's the incentive of keeping the status quo, right? That is the incentive. Because at the end of the day, if you, the listener control, base, don't, don't spend down your principal. They, the advisor, don't have to actually really plan and figure the best way for you to take your income. It is a great relationship for them. It it's works scalable for them. It's, it's transactional. Scalable. And also, and also obviously if you don't spend down the principal they're if they're charging a fee on all of this money, they could continue charging a fee on a lot of money, right? It's like a, it's an annuity for them for life, right? So I think it's a great point. I think that the key to this is the only way, though, people can do a controlled spend down is if they actually learn and plan, right? It's, it's not, we, we, you, we make it sound like, well, just control your spend down, right? The way the majority of the people are, the, the, for, the, for the majority of people listening, the type of retirement plan they have, there is no way they can control their spend down, right? So at the end of the day, if you, right, most of the people, they just have their money invested in the stock market. So people are thinking, well, how do I do a controlled spend down if all my money's sitting in the stock market? It's because your advisor has not taught you how to do it, right? This is why, and this is a big part of our course, right? We spend a lot of time teaching people how do you control your spend down so you never outlive your money, right? You never outlive your money. You enjoy the, the retirement you want. And I think that's the disconnect for most people, right? Most people don't know how to do this. Paul, it, it, here's where it comes down to is that it's – not a probability of success or a 60 page report with four, a spreadsheet that shows you taking out 4% a year. So a, to be able to do a controlled spend down, a, to actually let money serve you, there has to be multiple accounts with different strategies and all those different accounts to be able to pivot to during times of market volatility, not reduce your spending during times of market volatility. I could tell you in our private practice, a thousand clients over a billion dollars. Not one of our clients has cha didn't change their spending patterns in 2008, 
didn't change their spending patterns because of COVID, didn't not they retired in the middle of COVID. Whatever they had planned to do before the market event never changes. Because guess what? You're going to have four to seven major market events through your retirement years. Not one. You're going to have many, multiple. So if your solution and the advisor's solution is just don't spend and protect your principal, that's going to be a really non excite. I think you earned more than that with 30 years of 30, 40 years of serving money and saving money and working your butt off to accumulate what you have. That's my personal opinion. So a better solution is knowing the levers to pull, to have the plan built today for something we know is going to happen. We're going to have events, life events, health events, market events, four to seven times throughout retirement. So what is planned today, customized, individualized to you? Every one of you have different assets, different amounts, different age differences, Qualified, non-qualified, taxable money. Some of you have pensions. Some of you have Roth money. Some of you have annuities. Some of you have life insurance. These are all variables and levers that need to be utilized and pulled at the right times. And that's what we teach, Paul, in our seven to eight hours of class. That's why we're in all the major universities. There is tremendous value here. And all you have to do is attend one of our courses or even stream it from your home. One full day or two Evenings, a total of seven to eight hours, make a $29 donation to charity. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. And we'll be back. Much more straight ahead. You're listening to the Retirement Education Hour. Glad you've joined us. This is the Retirement Education Hour. We've been talking about a big topic today today the biggest retirement mistakes that people make. And it's an eye opener. We've covered a lot. We have more to go here. Kirk and Paul are with me. They are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. Reminder about their courses that they teach throughout the year. And these are held at local universities. You can get registered right now. Simply go to retirement planningedu.org. That's a really easy way to do that online. Or you're welcome to call 800 240 8981. Okay, so let's talk about life because life happens, right? Throws us curveballs. We know that there are world events, local events that are going to happen. And you say it can be dangerous to allow those to dictate too much of our plan for retirement. How so? You know, it's funny. This is one of the, and there was a number of things, but this is one of the major reasons. I guess it was 10 years ago when we started the foundation, the charity, to promote and teach advanced retirement strategies and why we approach the universities, right? To, to be able to teach these classes. There's this, what's the word I'm looking for? There is this common reaction retirees have when there are market events, life events. We often see it with uh, elections where they allow what is happening, short-term events, what's happening to dictate what their spending patterns are going to be in their limited years of retirement. It's insane that we're allowing a short-term recession, uh, a market event, who's being elected, who's being impeached to dictate what I spend in a given year when the number of years I have in retirement could be one, it could be 20, it could be 30. It's limiting. There's, It's not limitless, it's limiting. And we're allowing short-term market events to dictate it. And, and this is, Paul, driven because of these general rules our industry has promoted for the average retiree. And again, this show is not about the average retiree. These are about people who have saved money and have resources for retirement. Right, right. And, and you know, it goes back to the comment you made earlier, which is in our retirement, we're all going to experience a certain number of market events, right? We're all going to experience every four years, a potentially a new president, right? So if you're going to allow these external events to dictate how you spend your money, what you spend, what you do, what a horrible way to, 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 what a horrible retirement you're going to have, right? So if the market's doing well, you spend. And if we have a pandemic, well, you don't take a trip that year. Well, you don't do certain things, right? I mean, that, 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 I mean, allow external events to dictate how you spend is horrible. But the reality is, is that at some point, it doesn't even matter. At some point, the government's going to force you to take a certain amount of money, no matter what, right? At the end of the day, the government's going to force you to do that. But you don't want- Oh, that's a great point. That is a great point. I'm sorry I interrupted, but that, Paul, you 
it, it is such a good point that I think people forget thinking that they're always going to be in control of how much income they ha- distributions they have to take. So Paul's point is, okay, now I'm 75 or I'm 80 years old and we have a recession and you don't want to take money out because you're afraid of outliving your money. The government's not afraid of you outliving money because the government's going to tell you you have to take out 6% out of your retirement accounts, whether you want it or not, whether you like the president or not, or whether you, or if we're in the middle of a recession or a pandemic or not. It doesn't matter. It doesn't. It doesn't. I mean, you know, you made a comment earlier that, that as you said it, I thought that's a horrible thing to think about. But it is the truth, right? Think of all these people who are allowing external events to dictate how they spend, right? So we, we're in the middle of a pandemic, and all of a sudden people for a year stop doing the things they want to do. And then the next year something happens to them personally, right? And now they can't take the trips they want because they have a health issue, right? Or something changes in their life, right? It, it, what a horrible way to live your retirement, allowing all these external things to dictate what you do. And how many people have you met? How many people from our class have you met where that happened to and they actually never enjoyed the retirement. I can think of one person in particular who they you know, they worked too long, right? And then all of a sudden they retired and then they shared a story where something happened in the market, they stopped spending, and then something happened in the spouse, end up with MS, and actually never really did the things they wanted to do. Paul. That's not a story. If I can say, that's not an uncommon story. Thank you. It's that not happens, one. It happens all the time. Paul, we had 20 people in our private practice die in their 50s and 60s in the last 12 months. Some from COVID. The majority was not COVID. It was cancer, stroke. And one was hit by a car, literally walking. It was on the news. Dementia. Uh, Dementia. D- yeah, that's a, that's another point, Paul. I've got a 75-year-old in our private. I have a 75-year-old I talked to yesterday who has really no 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 children. There's no spouse. There's no one to depend on. And I said to them, I said, look, I'm worried there are some things changing and we need to simplify. This person has a lot of things he's got going on, right, in terms of investments and different things everywhere. I said, we need to consolidate, simplify, and get some things in order because I'm really worried. He said, oh, I got I got plenty of time. I got plenty of time. People never think, all of you listening, ah, I, I, I'm 62, I'm 58, I got plenty of time. Things happen, folks. My 55-year-old friend who just died from a heart attack. I mean, right. I, I'm telling you. If well, you're they, letting, they sh- know that people who are listening know they all have friends. They know they, that, but they don't believe it's them. No one ever thinks it can happen. To I them. know it's right. remarkable. And no one ever thinks. It's and here, be and this goes back to our original point: we're allowing short-term market events or short-term any sort of event to dictate not only your spending, but some of you won't retire when we're in the middle of a recession or pandemic, or you don't like the president who's being elected. You're you're not going to retire because of this. Like, you're going to face these events four to seven times throughout your retirement. What? Talk about a relationship with money. Talk about serving money versus money serving you. Hey, that money's there to serve you now. And if you have the right plans and you know all the levers you can pull during these different events, life, health, economic, political, geopolitical events, there are levers to pull. But that's I'm but promising here, you. Here's the thing, though. You say levers. They don't understand. People don't know what you're t- – that's that's what we do in our class. In our class, right, we go through all of the important levers so that people don't let external events dictate their life. That's the key. Right. We teach them. We, what, teach, we, them. Take, we teach them our 50-hour plan to that's show right. them what a plan does and all the different levers that are available and how and when you should use them. That's That's the course, and that's why the course isn't two hours or a free steak dinner seminar where someone sells you a variable annuity. No, 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 no. This is a nonprofit organization teaching a class in universities that is eight hours in length taught in a full day or one, two uh, or two evenings. All you have to do to attend this course is make a twenty nine dollar donation to charity and we'll let you come to the class and pick our brains of this is all we do. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org or call 800 240 8981. And we're back in just a moment. 
This is the Retirement Education Hour. Are you registered yet? If not, want to make sure you know all about the Retirement Education Foundation's courses. These are courses on retirement. They're taught throughout the year. We want you to be able to find a location, a date, a time that works best for you and take that first step, a step closer to your ideal retirement. Now, these are courses, as I said, they are sponsored by the Retirement Education Foundation, a deep dive into all things retirement, what you need to have that successful retirement. Taught at local universities, including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, and Oakland University. You can also opt to take the course in the comfort of your own home virtually. So get registered today at retirementplanningedu.org, or you can call 800-240-8981. And of course, I'm here with financial instructors, Kurt Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler. We've been talking about the top mistakes people make in retirement. And of course, we want to avoid these But boy, this is a big one, right? This big mistake of not planning. And you two see this more than ever, don't you? Yeah. The problem is is that most people think they have a plan. And the research suggests only 4% of people really have a retirement plan. And so let's clearly define what is not a plan. A dial with a probability of whether you're going to outlive your money or not is not a plan. A spreadsheet showing you taking withdrawals of 4% is not a plan. A a, brokerage statement. A brokerage statement. An allocation model is not a plan. A plan is going to tell you and have many different accounts, if you will, buckets if you want, from which you can draw income from at different times during different events, creating the most tax-efficient way in time to take income from which accounts to mitigate the chances of outliving your money, mitigate something called sequence of return risk, which is the number one risk to your retirement. If you don't know what it is, go to our website and read the white paper and play with the calculator to mitigate and reduce taxes, ultimately giving you freedom to be able to let money serve you and enjoy retirement. Full circle. So really at the end of the day, right, all of the mistakes that we've talked about will all be mitigated, right? They will. If we do this last thing, right? If at the end of the day, people plan their retirement, really plan the way they need to, they won't allow external events to dictate, right? They will retire when they are when they want to retire. They will spend the money that they want to spend. They won't necessarily protect their principal, but have a controlled spend on all the mistakes that we've been talking about in this show. All can be mitigated if you just plan right, right? And the problem, again, is, is that you sort of listed what a plan isn't. I still believe most people listening to the show are going to end this, you know, listening to the show thinking they're okay. They have a plan because someone gave Gosh. them something that looks really beautiful. Just because something is pretty, <laughs> right? Just because something looks expensive doesn't mean it has value, right? Even if it was expensive. Even if it was expensive doesn't mean it has value, right? And and really, if you really want to understand what we're talking about in planning, I mean, I think one of the most valuable parts of the class that we teach is we actually show people a plan. We do it in the beginning. We do it at the end. And how often do people walk away saying, this is nothing like what they have seen or what they have? And I'm so glad you emphasize that, Paul, because ev- this is the buzzword right now. Turn on TV right now. Ev- Fidelity has a income plan. Listen, you look at your plan and say to yourself, did it take them 40, 50 hours to build that plan? Was this customized just for me? Did someone do 30 years of tax projections for you? In other words, assuming we did no plan and then run hundreds of iterations working backwards to find the most efficient way to minimize taxes, minimizing taxes isn't just about money in your pocket. It also reduces the chance of outliving your money because you'll have to take less money out per year, but also minimizes something called sequence of return risk, which we don't have time to cover today. But you really, that's where you have to start. Did someone really spend 50 hours constructing this plan? Trust me, when you come to our class at the universities and we show you the plan, you're going to say, okay, this was not computer generated. Someone literally ran hundreds of iterations trying to find, it is so obvious that there was 40, 50 hours spent on this plan. It's not just a spreadsheet of, you know, Money Guide Pro or eMoney. 
that everyone uses now and spits out these beautiful illustrations with spreadsheets. If it's not customized, individualized to you, changing, taking money from different buckets, different accounts at different times, and doing 30 years of tax projections to show you how to minimize that, it is not a plan. Here's the other thing, Paul. I, I know I'm dominating time like usual because I'm a big mouth and I don't stop talking. I'm obviously very passionate about this, but it's underestimating the importance of what you can spend or should spend. This is, it I becomes, don't want to say budget. It becomes, a, it becomes a permission slip. It is, right? right? At the end of the day, if you really plan, it gives you the freedom to really spend what you want to spend and enjoy your retirement. I mean, it seems so simple, but I, I think of how many people in our private practice we've met who've come up from the class who once they have it, all of a sudden, it's like they're enjoying their life in a way they they weren't and couldn't anticipate. What a get, what an amazing thing for people, right? That's that that's why you worked 30, 40 years of your life, right? Oh, 100%. I, you know, it's also amazing when in our so in the class when we show people how to do the calculation of the amount of income they're going to be forced to take in their mid 70s and 80s and they realize how little they're taking now or plan to take early in retirement and think to themselves, what did I do? I just blew it. When I was healthiest and most active, I took the least. But when I was not spending and I had three doctor's appointments a week and I didn't want to travel, I have to take the most. Come to an eight-hour course so you understand what a plan is and how to construct this plan. We're taught at all the major universities. We're streaming it live on air from the university so you can stay in the comfort of your home seven to eight hours in length all you have to do is make a 29 dollar donation to charity if you'd like to register go to retirementplanningedu.org that's retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981 Investment advisory services are offered by Strategic Investment Advisors, Inc., an SEC-registered investment advisory firm. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any insurance discussed in this show is backed by the financial strength and claims-paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This show is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual situation. Retirement Education Foundation is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during this show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Retirement Education Foundation. This radio show is a paid placement.